All right, boys and girls, we are back working on the Mustang. Because of COVID-19 and some family commitments, I have not been down here in a good month. And uh, Ed, who agreed to let me do the work here in the R&D Center at TCI, uh, wants this thing out of here, I guess, because he's been going to town getting a lot done. Uh, so you're not gonna see as much video installing a lot of this suspension because uh, it was done without me so i was looking forward to doing it myself but uh you can't complain about someone who's going to get your project on the road sooner than it otherwise would have so let's take a look See, we went with this light gray powder coat. The floor now is all painted. Um, it's a, uh, it's supposed to be a um, lightweight, thinner bed liner style material. So still kind of tough and durable for who knows what this thing's gonna see, but it's all cleaned up, all one color. The wheel wells all painted. Um, patched the frame in a few spots where it was rotted a little bit. Pretty excited about all that. See the hole in the floor is gone there. Um, so most of the suspension looks like it's actually in the car, ready to go. Let's talk about the suspension a little bit. So the uh, Mustang IFS, normally the cross member here continues across, but I think Ed, did not want me to be able to put an LS motor in this Mustang. Um, we talked about trying to keep the motor in the same spot as it was before, because originally I was gonna try and reuse these down bars and the valve cover comes just under them so the motor couldn't come up at all. It could have come forward, but these guys had the motor set so far back and down that the oil pump would have hit this cross member, the front oil pump sump in the oil pan um so that and i think ed's been wanting to play with ackerman which is easier to play with on a rear steer car than a front steer car um so the upper uh, control arm and shock mounts here that's standard off the shelf this upper control arms off the shelf spindles off the shelf the lower control arm is custom but it's really just to get the lower ball joint back to the normal spot and it's the same length so the actual geometry except for ackerman is the same as their off the shelf stuff no difference in performance really um, this was more about getting the engine in a custom location um, some side effects of that though is we're going to have calipers that are front mounted because these custom fancy steering arms here are not going to um, allow the caliper which would normally be mounted on the rear here to fit. Um, this cross member that holds the um, rack and adds some rigidity to the system, that's removable. This, uh, I think this is like a Dodge Omni rack that this thing comes off of. So anyhow, moving to the rear, you know, the Cross member here is pretty standard. We are doing an adjustable rear sway bar here to give some fine tuning ability. I found that pretty helpful with the um, with the Camaro. I think that the uh, Panhard kind of triangulation reinforcement here is standard now, or at least an option. Um, the Camaro doesn't have this, um, but I think it's got pretty beefy. We went in and reinforced that a lot. But yeah, she's there, she's together. This thing could be running in like another week, two weeks. <laughs> uh, depending on how much time it takes to get some of the little pieces that we need. But today's project, you can see, we got this Coleman full floater housing. The center section is back from Curry. Um, took the locker out and put a Detroit True, True Track in it. The locker is just not going to be as good for autocross when and if I do autocross this car. But 
brand new axles, new ends. These are cambered, uh, negative cambered ends. Um, so yeah, time to put this thing together and uh, get one step closer. Tech tip for you guys, when you have your third section, your third member rebuilt, make sure you clean off the mating surfaces. Both the um, housing and the third member were filthy. I'm sure that would not have done any favors for the uh, lube locker gasket. But I think this is 355s or 350 gears. I don't remember, I have to look it up, but we got the nice shiny new a Detroit True Track in there. This whole thing was rebuilt and gone through with the True Track added uh, by Curry Enterprises. Thank you, Curry. As far as I'm concerned, it's now a Curry axle under the car. Um, so yeah, both mating surfaces are clean. Time to uh, put it together. Here we go. First time trying to hustle one of these by myself at chest height. I don't know how smart that is. Wrapping up for the day here. This Mustang has come a long way. Very close to being done. We got the shocks mounted up front here. Um, all the heavy duty suspension stuff's in. Basically, you just need to install the calipers. So, when I come back, I want to try and put the plates in that block off the engine compartment. I'm gonna have to do something about the engine compartment because there's tons of overspray. We did a really good job taping off the car except the engine compartment for some reason but most of the work today was putting in the rear end so we got the torque arm in here we got the center section into the housing got it all mounted up the shocks are in the pan hard bar pull those axles out and work on that when i come back get the shock canisters mounted back here they're going to go on the tail panel um, but yeah, the car is looking pretty good. Uh, if there was an NMCA next weekend, I'd say we could have this thing running next weekend. Alright, so we're playing with axles on these 9 inch, you've got to put a bolt in the uh, inside end of the axle and the bolts touch each other and that keeps the uh, axle spaced appropriately, but we narrowed the housing two and a quarter inches, the new axles they sold me are three inches narrower, so there's a total of three quarter inch less axle, plus one of these axles has half an inch less line we'll see how much spacing it takes but i'm a little concerned that the axle speedway sold us might be short we'll find out i am back at speedway engineering we ended up with the wrong size axles 
frustrating moment whenever that kind of stuff happens, you know, building cars invariably some mistakes will get made and uh, you know, once uh, those initial frustrations die down, it's like, well, how does the company respond? And Speedway was awesome to deal with. They said, yep, bring the axles back. We'll get them exchanged out for you. No problem. Yada, yada. You know, just double check the measurements. And so I'm very happy about that. I'm pulling up here as a happy customer, not as an angry one. Uh, so let's go inside and get the new and improved axle. It says disc brakes should only be installed by someone experienced and competent. Yeah, we're in trouble. Cute little baby pads. Just check the brake motor alignment with the calipers. This side is pretty good. Ed has got the Ford tool out working on the other side. No. <laughs> Well, we're working on a Ford and using it, so got these lightweight Willwood calipers. Let's go see how it fits. You want to hold that so it don't come flying down that caliper. Oops, thank you. Definitely moved. Bag still. All right, success maybe. This 3M citrus cleaner seems to be the ticket for removing overspray on the fenders here from the bed liner. We'll see how it does on the wall there, but let it sit here for a few minutes. There we go. Like a charm. I feel a lot better knowing that I'm not going to destroy the paint getting that stuff off. We are going to close out these uh, shock, shock tower holes. This side cut looks like it'll work just fine. On this side there's a bit of a rounded lip here so a tip if you're doing shock towers on your Mustang, is you want to cut it so that the fender, inner fender is flush. Um, here's, you know, you can see we just set this in place here to check it out. But you can see where the shock tower was prepared before. There's a welded seam here. And I got to cut that all out. Same thing on this side. Um, the lip of the plate goes past these holes, these holes that are included already, so I know I've got plenty of room that I can use to uh, cut that material out, so I thought my grinding days were behind me, but I forgot about that part, so let's get to it. I had to take a break because I'm pouring sweat. Let's see 
The glasses are full sweat, fogged up. But grinding was not done. These bolts that held the uh, bump stop mount on the other side were welded in. They held the bump stop mount. There's four on each side. I got this side off, all four. I've got three of the four off this side. One in back there, I can't get to because of the brake line and the uh, roll cage tubing is in the way. So I'm gonna have to figure something else out on that one. Um, I ground off the weld bead that was on this side so that side's pretty much good to go the other side i'm gonna have to grind down a little bit somewhere on the rear when i cut this out the first time there's this is smooth and flat so we're good but we got a bead on that side i gotta take care of the edge on um, but first i gotta stop sweating for a minute see the handiwork from yesterday I wanted to just paint these edges where we I'd cut the metal but this inch or so along this front edge was um, starting to rust so just hit it with a flat disc ground it down I'm gonna pull this paper off see how it all turned out and then do the same thing on the other side Paint ended up being a pretty close match for just eyeballing it at Home Depot. It was the last can of this color paint they had. I'm going to start with bolting on the uh, shock tower covers that we painted last time we were here. Get the shock tower covers bolted on, then I want to get the brakes plumbed so that we can put on the new wheels, old tires from the takeoffs from the Camaro, put the new wheels on and uh, see what this thing's going to look like can sit on the ground under its own weight again. Don't ever say I'm not working hard on this thing. Holy cow, am I sweaty. But there you go. There's this side. I decided to skip every other bolt because, you know, why not save a couple ounces while I can? Also, still got to do the top. This side, the hole lines up here. This side, you can, none of these fender bolts line up with the inner fender. It's wider. So to achieve the right body alignment, they drilled two new holes here. Um, so you can see here's, here's the alignment hole, here's the fender. Hmm. Previous owner supposedly hit the wall with this thing. <sighs> Alright, back at it. Alright, I think this is going to probably wrap up this episode on the Mustang. We are pretty far along at this point. All of the suspension is pretty much on there. You can see sway bars on now, calipers are on. I do need to buy a set of lines that'll be the right size for these calipers. Um, but yeah, I'm stoked. These Willwood calipers are awesome. They're huge. I didn't really go over the brakes a lot, but talked to the guys at Willwood and told them what I wanted to do, that this is gonna be a much more track focused car than the Camaro. And we got the Aerolite six piston wide calipers. They make this in a wide and narrow. The main difference is a wide gets you a thicker brake pad that will last longer uh, when you're doing track sessions. So 
you know, the Camaro, I do one or two laps at speed, the tires go away and that's it. Where this car, we're gonna be on track for up to a half hour at a time, racing wheel to wheel against other cars. So we got a real serious front caliper. And then in the back, you know, this is a race car, not pro touring. So we don't really need a massive caliper in the back. Um, so we're using the smaller caliper. All of them though have the, um, high temp nipple coating. This is Willwood's um, best coating if you're gonna really get these calipers hot. Uh, so yeah, the rear is all plumb, the lines are in. Uh, you know, I think I already went over like the shocks are all in with the canisters and basically we'll do a nut and bolt on this. And next time, next episode should hopefully be us dropping the motor in. So, Thank you for tuning in and watching. Um, we hit over a thousand subscribers a few videos ago, which is awesome. All right, let's talk channel giveaways. So in the last Mustang video, I said, if the video gets over 50 likes, I'm giving away two Optima t-shirts and two autocross and track stickers. I didn't put a time limit on it. And while the video likes and comments got off to a little bit of slow start, um, it did pick up steam. We are well over 50 likes at this point. I had, I think about 30 commenters. So. Winners of that are the 70 Big Block Maverick and Parker. You guys won. Congrats. Send me an email, chad at autocrossandtrack.com, and uh, I'll get the info from you so I can send those out to you. And we're also going to do another giveaway on this video. I'm going to give away some Willwood swag in honor of the badass Willwood disc brakes that we put on the Mustang. Can't wait to feel those things out once they're properly bedded in and on track and everything. So... I think this is going to be pretty fun, pretty cool idea. So here's the deal. As soon as this video gets 50 likes on it or 25 comments, excluding any replies that I make, then within 48 hours, I will post the next Mustang video. Uh, it's going to be a fun video. I think you guys are going to want to see it. It's a pretty big milestone. So like and comment on this video, share with your friends, share the series. And as soon as we get to 50 likes or 25 comments, excluding any I make, 48 hours or less, I will post the next Mustang video and choose a winner from the commenters for the Willwood giveaway. We're going to give away a hat and a t-shirt or sweatshirt of your choice. We've got large and extra large, white and gray, and an old school Willwood sweatshirt. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Appreciate all the support. Thanks everybody that's been watching and following the Mustang Build Series. That's a wrap.